Welcome to Sports Betting Podcast from pregame.com for November 12th, 2009. I'm your host, RJ Bell. I'm joined by Vegas runner, genuine professional batter here in Vegas, and Marco D'Angelo, 30 years in the business. This is segment two of six this week. Big game preview, college football, Ohio State, Iowa. First up, VR, as usual, give us the line report on this game. Okay, this one opened up at Ohio State as a 13 and a half home favorite with a total of 35 and a half. As of today, you could find the number anywhere from 16 and a half to 17, and the total's 36. So a lot of money coming in on Ohio State. Okay, so we talk about this is when money comes in on a public team, it could be a legitimate position or it could be trying to get ahead of a big move and then buying it back. So here we really don't know which one it is. Correct. Okay, and just to be clear, is the Iowa quarterback status was known when this number opened. Yeah, when this line came out at 13 and a half, it's just the wise guys thought they didn't adjust enough and obviously they got down. So what's important is not to say, oh, that line moved because Because of the quarterback. quarterback. They knew about it at the open, they know about it now. Absolutely. Okay, so Marco, when you look at this game as a handicapper, what is the one factor that jumps out at you? To me, I don't know if Iowa can even score a point in this game. Based on the way they played last week, once Stanzi left the game, they were horrible. And Ohio State has one of the best uh, defenses in the country. Seven of ten games this year, they've held their opponents to 14 or less. All right, so it could just be a ma- I mean, we could be looking like at a 21-3 kind of game. You could, definitely. All right, All right. now with the total, now give me the total one more time. It here. opened at 35 and a half, and, and it's up to 36. All right, so really, if you do the mathematics, is what they're saying is it's a 27-10 game. Yeah. Is what they're pretty much what they're projecting here. Okay, so as you look at this game, what's the one factor that jumps uh, out? Like Marco said, uh, definitely uh, about the defense and, and can Iowa score. Uh, the problem is they can't rush the ball. All year they've done it through the air. Now all of a sudden you lost your starting QB who had 2,200 yards and 15 touchdowns. So I don't think James Vandenberg now, being a freshman a good, is you, capable. Let me jump in. You make a good point. Is all second string quarterbacks are not created equal? Correct. First question is how important is that? If to the this Browns, team. yeah, if the Browns lose their quarterback, the next guy might be just as good, Quinn or Anderson. Here, it sounds like you guys both believe that the drop-off is significant. Yeah, extremely, and that's what we saw the line move. It looks like the, the sharp money believes that the odds makers didn't adjust enough because this Vandenberg, no, they don't have confidence in him at all. It's up to 16 and a half, 17. Well, when he came in last week in relief, they only completed 9 of 27 passes once he came into the game last week. Yeah, he, his career is... Yards. 11 of 30 with one interception so now i'm not sure and and you guys make a good point usually i don't like to do what the public does no. I, I, sometimes i'll close my eyes and think is if i'm down at the you know bellagio or the old stardust we used to uh, stomp around that you probably spent a lot of time back in the handicappers corner back all the there. time the library back the there. library right. the handicap- yeah, that's, that's library. all gone now but the um I try to think, what, what is the average $20, $30 batter going to do? How is he going to react? And my thing is, oh, I was quarterbacks out. I want to play high state. So right there, I'm not inclined to look to high state. But I, I, I think there can be a point. Sometimes a quarterback is super valuable. So my question is this. We've got a very well-coached team. Can we agree with that with Iowa? Absolutely. Yes. I, and we also have a team that if we profile them, they play close games. Even when they were winning, they were sure. close games. They are 10-1 and one on the road, our ATS. So 10 of the last 11 they covered on the road. So here's a team that can play on the road, that's well coached, that plays close games, and who's getting you know, 16, 17 points now. Is, isn't this what the, a big dog's supposed to look like? If they had a great offense, then they wouldn't be getting over two touchdowns. So the question is, you, you're usually not getting great teams getting that many. Plus yeah, points. exactly. So the question is, how as a handicapper do you split up and say, here's a situation I want to lay him and here's when I want to take him? Because you know the one team is better. The, the big negative for Iowa, and usually I would look to back Iowa in this spot. Like you said, getting all these points, the team is undefeated on the road this year as well. You said they're 10 and 1 ATS the last 11 games, so they're going to stay uh, tight. 10 and 1 on the road. Yeah. So they keep a game close getting 17 
the problem is they suffered their first loss last year. See, week. I disagree with that. And when now you let, let me jump out in. of BCS. Ah, uh, see, see, I was ready for this one. Mark, this is one of Marco's pet um, uh, theories, angles, which is whenever a team loses its expectation or it's disappointed by what its goal was, might be the better way to say it, the next game's troublesome because they know they're not going to reach their goal. I don't think anyone in the right mind thought I was right, right. was the BCS. No. Before the season, it was the Big Ten Championship. Right now, Iowa still controls their own destiny. So does Ohio State. If Iowa wins out there in the Rose Bowl, if Ohio State wins out there in the Rose Bowl, so I think in general, the whole letdown factor will not be the case with this Iowa team. Marco, you be, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 and I understand what you're saying. They didn't come into the season saying, we're gonna go undefeated, we're gonna run the table. And even, even, up until last week, I, I don't think they expected to lose the game last week, but I don't think they expected to win these games. I think the Rose Bowl would be a great season yeah, for them, yeah, yeah. and it's hard to imagine they're not going to give their full effort here. Marco, you're the expert on, no on this. You want to reinduce me again here? I've been like out of this podcast. This I got to speak up. Uh, you got a lot of good ideas here. I know. Just kidding. I agree with you in that. The one thing I want to jump back to one thing you said earlier about looking for the dog and the the injury you know the value the one key that you look for in a team like that Iowa does possess and that is you need to have a good defense that can step up and pick up the slack for your offense in in Iowa's defense has played good ball all year I mean they went into Penn State also earlier this year and handcuffed Penn State just like Ohio State did last week so you have that element uh, you do have still the, the run for the uh, Rose Bowl, so their expectations can't be totally gone. But this team has to be a little bit disheartened that not only do you... Oh, disheartened. Okay. Write <laughs> <laughs> that one down. Yeah. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> to lose their first game and lose their leader in the same game. That's an interesting point. That injury now, I saw today, and again, we're taping Wednesday, is I saw today is uh, he might be back for the bowl games is what they're saying. But again, they have lost their leader, and that could be a source of disappointment. That's a very good point. Speaking to the sports books, um, as of right now, they have been getting balanced action since the line's gotten to 16, 17. It's not totally one-sided, Ohio State. They are getting enough Iowa right now because it is a lot of points for a Big Ten team to be getting. Uh, if you remember, a couple years ago, Oregon was in the same exact situation. They were undefeated, rolling along. They had that quarterback, Dixon, that was... Mean. He, he was a Heisman candidate. All right, all right. And they, you know, they lost him and... You and know, Arizona. In their se their their We're season unraveled on them, you know, it's a situation. It, it's tough. You, you All right, know. so let me jump in here. A couple stats. Uh, we were talking about the total. Twenty last twenty seven games for Iowa, they've gone under twenty two times. Not strong. All right, so this is a team twenty two and five towards the under. That that in general. Now again, we got a low number here, so it might be we're finally the lines makers have caught up to this tendency towards the under. One consideration on it, because I was looking at the under myself, but one alarming stat that I have with Iowa is they've had 10 turnovers in their last two games. You get a couple turnovers and, and make that into a quick score for Ohio State, with this low of a number, you're going to be sitting a little bit worried. With That's a good the point. Uh, we're down to the last minute, so I'll just knock out these numbers real quick. Seven straight against the spread for high State against winning teams. High State has a tendency to be, people believe them to not do well against winning teams. Well, maybe they haven't done well against those top five teams, but they've done well in general against winning teams seven straight. Another thing, Scouts Inc. does positional matchups. It's only 5-4 high State. So you got a, a two touchdown Extremely or more close. dog that other than that quarterback position, they're saying is a Very pretty close, even game. Sure. That's kind of interesting. And... All right, I think that's good. All right, so good stuff. Next up, we're going to be pre previewing another college football game. And remember, you can actually download all of our audio podcasts at iTunes. Just search for pregame.com, or you can actually go to pregame.tv and see all of our videos.